A lot of modern movies nowadays feel like they have uh, this agenda. I can't really pinpoint where or even what this so-called agenda even is, but one thing's for certain, it's definitely there. Most modern movies, and mostly just modern media in general, have straight away and even killed off the mentor character entirely. Especially if that character is a strong, straight white male. Because that's toxic, and any form of masculinity shown in a movie like that is problematic. The teachings of stoicism through film has been almost eradicated with this new woke genre of film. Every character needs to be emotional and willing to lay out all their feelings for the world to see. The art of stoicism has been lost, not just in film, but in modern society in general. It almost feels like you can't have disagreements with anybody anymore without getting berated by somebody for having a different opinion. In film, it also kind of feels that way. That the mentor character has to know less than the strong female or it will be looked at as toxic, which in my eyes anyways, just isn't true. We love the mentor archetype. Why do you think Top Gun Maverick did so well? The mentor serves as a guide and a teacher for our protagonist. They give them insight and knowledge into achieving their goal. They help develop the protagonist into a strong and more capable character. But that's not the only type of character that feels like they're trying to kill off. Who's they? I don't know. The love interest is a great addition to the story, if you can pull it off well. And I say if because there are plenty of movies that include the love interest archetype but can't execute it effectively. A good example that just came out recently is the live action Little Mermaid, which sucks as to how you can mess that up because Disney had already made the magic ingredient for that with the animated Little Mermaid. Prince Eric was never just Ariel's opposite. He was his own character with his own personality. I don't know what the point of this change in the live action was for, but I got a feeling as to fuel that agenda I was talking about earlier. Whatever that agenda might be. A great example of a movie using the love interest archetype really well is the first Avatar movie. Jake Sully doesn't immediately fall for Natiri when he sees her for the first time. It isn't love at first sight. Just like how he doesn't immediately fall in love with the world of Pandora. Jake's appreciation for Pandora is slow and it's also paralleled with his romance with Natiri. As Jake Sully grows to love the world that is Pandora, he also grows to love Natiri. This realization of Avatar actually made me appreciate James Cameron's vision for this film. Because before, I was one of those people that didn't like Avatar. But because of that perfectly written romance between Jake and Natiri, I grew to love this movie. So if it can make your story and film better, why does it feel like Hollywood is trying to kill this archetype off? One of the first reasons why I think that it's not being used in more modern films is because of this new type of archetype that's been introduced into modern cinema. I'm of course talking about the strong independent woman paradigm that's essentially what's been favored by Hollywood as of late. The birth of this character of course stems from the Me Too movement that erupted within Hollywood itself. With allegations and indictment of celebrities like Bill Crosby, Kevin Spacey, and the final boss of Creeps, film producer Harvey Weinstein, you have a new type of soulless and unlikable character. Harvey Weinstein, of course, deserved everything that was coming to him. But why did they have to come at the expense of men and the value of masculinity? Now all we have are these Mary Sues that are boring and don't have a shred of likability to them whatsoever. So how does this relate to the love interest? The purpose of a love interest in any story is to give your protagonist a visible change throughout. It gives your central character an arc. The problem with the these strong female characters and these strong characters in general, men and women, is because they're already perfect, why would they need a romantic partner? For example, when Captain Marvel removes the Kree implant that suppressed her powers, it's supposed to symbolically show us that all she needed to defeat the Kree was to be at her full potential. Never having any challenges leads to no development. No development leads to no relatability. When there's no development, again, I ask, what do you need a love interest for? Your protagonist is already perfect. In Star Wars, Hans and Leia having a romantic relationship just adds so much value to each character. It's undoubtedly one of the best love stories in the entire Star Wars franchise. Compare that to Rey, and she has no love story, no love interest. Poe? Finn? Nada. If Rey had a love interest, we could see her internal and external changes in her character. Now, I already know what you're gonna say, but she's a Jedi. Jedi aren't supposed to have romantic relationships. Yes, but no. Not exactly. They're not supposed to have any attachments that would hinder their ability to balance the Force. Just look at Jedi Survivor. Cal has Marin, and their love story is beautiful. It develops and makes us care about these two more because they are romantically involved with one another. The love interest adds so much value to a central character.
Adventure. I mean, if you want a really great example, just look at Disney's 1989 classic. In The Little Mermaid, Prince Eric doesn't just feel like Ariel's love interest. He's his own character. We like Prince Eric not just because Ariel likes Prince Eric, but because Eric is a daring shipmaster with a passion for sailing. And as Ariel's love interest, he adds so much value to her character. Another memorable love interest that really adds value to the protagonist is the movie Rocky. I just recently watched this film, and sometimes I forget how much of a masterpiece that Rocky really is. Adrian and Rocky have probably one of the best love stories out there, if not the best love story. They complement each other so well that you can't help but be a fan of their relationship. Adrian being shy and Rocky being dumb, both attributes hinder their ability to be confident with themselves. As Rocky and Adrian get closer, and closer throughout the film, we start to see them both gain more confidence in themselves and in each other. Like Rocky says, he and Adrian fill each other's gaps. But I know what you're thinking. The Little Mermaid and Rocky are love stories, so they kind of have to have love interests. Yes, you are correct. But let me offer you a more recent example. Again, back to Jedi Survivor. Although not perfect, Story-wise, it's a solid sequel. And in it, one of the best things that they did in this one was shifting Cal and Marin into a romantic relationship. Seeing Cal and Marin get closer to each other after the events of Jedi Fallen Order was very satisfying. Their shared trauma of losing their families not only makes so much sense, but works because you actually find yourself rooting for them. The execution of it is successful because the writers never force their romance upon you. It never feels like they're trying to make you care for them because they have a bit of romance. In Spider-Man Across the Spider, Universe, as of right now anyways, Gwen and Miles feel natural and fluid to the point where you find yourself supporting their romance and it's beautiful. It's like what Pavadi Papaka said, it's a will they won't they situation. And it will be extremely satisfying when we do get to see them eventually get to that point. With all this in mind, Obviously, the love interest archetype isn't fully dead. Plenty of shows and movies have that type of character in their writing, and there's a handful of movies that don't incorporate a love interest, like Escape from Alcatraz, and an even more recent example is Once Upon a Time in Hollywood that are still great films. And if you want to get technical, just look up John Bronco on YouTube. That movie itself is a whole love interest. So I guess what I'm trying to say is that the reason a lot of modern movies suck is because of this woke propaganda that's being spoon-fed to us. And when I say woke, I am mostly talking about movies that try to force this narrative of the Mary Sue. No development of a character, not having any idea how to make us like these characters, well, one way writers could help with that is incorporating a bit of romance. You could add this love interest character archetype anywhere. But at the end of the day, it's not my job to fix their awful writing. As always, I appreciate all of you for watching, especially if you stuck around to even hear this. Again, I very much appreciate it. Remember to follow the Lord, protect your energy, stay safe, and without further ado, peace!